we and we're li- and we're live, Mitch. We're live. We're live. Oh, today is today is. Uh, I actually don't know. Um, today is the twenty first. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, Taco Tuesday. We had tacos Hi. last night. I'm jealous. Uh, do you want a baked potato? I've got you a baked potato. Want a baked... <laughs> <laughs> I love baked potatoes. I like twice baked potatoes. Oh, that's so delicious. Right Those now. are delicious. They take a little more work. I'm, so, you know, t- this ahead. isn't camera talk. It's just food talk. All the food that we can't yeah. have right we now. We always start horribly we start off, off topic. Not talking okay. about anything <laughs> camera related. And everyone's like, uh, and they come in waves and then they leave in waves. Yeah. Like, camera talk. But to get uh, on topic about? though, yeah. we're here with Chris from Fuji. Yeah. Camera nerd. Official camera nerd. Official camera nerd. Um, but uh, I was excited to have you on because I finally have a Fuji camera that I actually really, really like. What? Well, I don't have it, but I have used one, I used one use that, I, that, I, that I really, really liked. That's the X100V. I was a big it's, fan of that camera. So It's a, it's a huge step up uh, from its predecessors. And I know every person is going to tell you that when the new camera comes out. But, you know, the weather ceiling was really the deal breaker for me up until that point. And it's not because of the cameras can't handle it up to that point. It's just as a landscape photographer, I needed it. Yeah, And, uh, you know, a lot of people made a big deal. I mean, you have to have a filter, you have to have this, you have to have that in order to make it. And I, it's really not that convoluted. Yeah. I mean, I've, it's that's a $10 uh, adapter ring that I got I know, right? <laughs> used. And I, there it is. And I got my filter for about a dollar, you know, off of a scrap bin just to show people. And uh, I have a fully weather sealed camera now. It's it's awesome. It's very it's cool. Mitch, it comes like down it? to uh, well, I like. So I was going to say, weather sealing is is really important. That's a valid point, and that's um, with a lot of photographers. I think it ends up coming down to what you like about a camera. Is you know after you've figured out all the technical stuff, not all of it, but once you've right. gotten a good hang of it, um, it usually comes down to like usability build quality and your workflow. And uh, that's those kind of those three things kind of make the X100 for me. It's a it's a small camera that you can have with you uh, majority of the time. Like it doesn't if you have a full frame interchangeable or right. or a APS-C interchangeable system, whether it's mirrorless or DSLR, if you have nice lenses, it's still going to be big and heavy and kind of a commitment to carry with you. This could fit in a jacket pocket pretty easily. And you're, it is jacketable. You could be confident with it <laughs> if you've got that little uh, that little uh, filter adapter like you've got on yours. It makes it even more robust. And yeah, I mean, I I've not had any issues with it at all. And uh, you know, I started I started uh, back with the X100s, and that's really what got me into the system. I fell in love with that, and there's a lot of finicky controls. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, you did it because you like the image quality, you like the experience, and I will say. It's not the camera that I go to first, just because I'm left eye dominant. And so, oh, for, I see. so for me, if <laughs> I was right eye dominant, yeah, for me, this is fantastic for shooters. And don't get me wrong, you know, I shoot plenty of film rangefinder cameras. Uh, you know, the one rangefinder camera I have, I actually bought from you guys uh, back when I first started uh, my Leica M9. You know, that's my one go to. Uh, but for actual shooting, just having a centralized viewfinder is just. The, the best for me, but it's, I'm getting used to it. You know, having the touch screen, I usually turn it off uh, for a lot of situations, uh, but for review, spot on, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And Mike, yeah. I see your comment there. I just want to say hi to you. It's always oh, yeah, good to go. see you, Mike. Mike says, what's up? Can I say something about that camera that I think I'm maybe the only person who who found it to be their, their favorite part of the camera? Sure. Okay, what you get? The, it has what's called what I've I've named it uh, Sith mode. Sith mode. <laughs> oh, it, it has Sith mode. Uh, you can so go into the if you go to the contrast settings on the menu, um, and you you can kind of go through. And I've never seen a camera that has this option, um, where you can change the, the way that or the colors that are uh, represented to you when you're looking through the main menu. Oh um, yeah. So the bl- the black and red. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I use that for night time shooting all the time. I was like, I'm gonna use this. All the time. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> you, you would just hand me the demo camera we had in the store in the back and be like, "Yo, check this out. You love this." And then I'm just like, oh, "This hurts my eyes." <laughs> it was I just I like a up... basic screen, but he was just really enjoying it. Well, we I, had uh... the, we had the black version with the uh, um, which, and then the V on it 
looked oh, very yeah, like Darth look Vader. Uh -huh. And then you had the red and dark. And I was like, this is so like Star Wars. Anything Star Wars gets me <laughs> so riled up. <laughs> Cool. So I'm just gonna name all the cameras from now on. Yes. Yeah. Anything Star I want Wars? And at least TK421 one. to be a camera. <laughs> and I want. Uh, I want Rogue Two as a camera. Like right. let's go. <laughs> hey, as long as it's named after you know the you know four through six, then we're golden. Anything after that point? Oh, we're man. definitely on the same page. We're not gonna. Don't get. This is not a Star this is Wars a camera, podcast. This is a camera, a camera uh, uh, podcast. If we talk about. So, oh, I, I mean, we got obviously <laughs> there's specs out there. I mean, a lot of people have poured through the specs. If you right. if you want our experience on it, I've had it for at least two months now. I mean, autofocus is second to none. I mean, people complained about that in its predecessors. It's snappy. It has 425 autofocus points. The lens is new. It outresolves the older lens just because that older lens was from day one, you know, from when we first started with the original X100. Sure. Uh, this new one is night and day difference. I mean, 40 by 60 prints, no problem whatsoever. And I think that's ultimately what's nice about this system is you now have something that could potentially be perceived as a backup, but that ultimately could be your, your primary camera. I have people selling X-T3s and all their lenses just for this camera. If they like the 35 millimeter perspective. It's, I, I could see that. <laughs> for yeah. me, I, I, I don't know, man. I've got way too much invested in, in our lineup to do that. But mm -hmm. you know, if I want simplicity, and I want that overall shooting experience. I don't have to look for another camera. I, I really don't. Um, my girlfriend, my uh, girlfriend loves her XT30, and really? I keep I keep threatening to sell it just to get an X100V. I'm just like, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> but uh, do it. Do it. I know. <laughs> Everyone, it's like it's the one camera. Even the even the the T and the and the F. Um, yeah. when anyone comes into the camera shop and say, if you can have any camera in here, and it's not that I can't like afford to buy the X 100 V with, you know, after a couple paychecks or, or selling a lens here and there. Um, it's just that, uh, I should, I should just buy one. They say, what, if you get any camera in the, in the camera shop, what would it be? And I go, it's this Fuji X 100 and it doesn't matter what model it's the sexiest th thing in the store. And it's it just like, a very sexy camera. yeah. So I don't know. I just love. I just love the aesthetic of it, and uh, um, and you guys have added a couple more. Like, um, isn't the ISO dial new? It's completely new. So now I don't know if this is going to be kind of hard. So I could literally just yeah, let me pull put up you on, on the it. big screen. There we go. Ooh, Ooh. I pull up, and now I just rotate rather right. than having to pull up and rotate. Mm -hmm. I my wish, uh, to be honest, is I'd like to see that you could send like your X Pro three in or an X Pro two and have it converted to a dial like this. That'd be a pretty awesome option. Sure. Uh, be because amazing. once you once you use this, it's harder to go back to the other systems. I'm not gonna lie. He says, uh, Boston Hooligan 08 says he's a Sony shooter and he pre-ordered the X-T4 and he's gonna give it a whirl before uh, he trades in his A7R3. It's, uh, so I, I do have my X-T4 here. Uh, I've got big rigs handle on it. I, big rig, small rig, sorry, brain fart. Uh, <laughs> I've actually shot this more than any other XT series uh, so far. It's uh, it is my favorite, and it's Ibis is nice. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. I mean, we're getting Ibis that's normally in terms of stops of image stabilization, usually meant for smaller sensors. I mean, with eighteen of our lenses, you have six and a half stops, and like I have my Voigtlander M mount lens on here, seventy five one point five, and I'm like I'm hand holding like an eighth of a second, no problem wow. whatsoever. And I'm doing, you know, motion blur stuff, landscape stuff that I normally would have to bring my tripod. And I, I still bring it if I'm mm -hmm. doing above a second, two seconds, because obviously that depends on field of view, how long I can hold it. Uh, but the feel is right. Viewfinder is great. Image stability is spot on. Obviously, people want the new battery. Um, it's, it, it is my favorite. Also, I will say, I know not a lot of people are, are JPEG shooters, but the the classic Meg man, I mean, it is, I love it. Yeah, yeah don't, we're going to have to cover classic Meg here in a second. <laughs> um, but a, go ahead. we have, we have a, we have a whole presentation on, on the XT4, not really a whole presentation, but we've got like a lot of talking notes you sent me, Chris, that we're going yeah, to get to. Yeah, let's, let's do it. I have 10 minutes. Are we so, going to, all right. do we get to geek out about classic Nick? Yeah, yeah let's go. we're going to get happy about that. All right, good. Mag right now while I get this set up. 
Everyone in the world loves classic Neg. Sure. It's, Everybody. It's, if you don't, you just don't love it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna see I'm gonna see let me see what this looks like on the screen. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I can make it go full screen, but then I won't be able to see anyone. No, it's I think that moody. looks fine. Everything is okay. Yeah. How about oh that makes it smaller actually? So let's do this. Perfect. Ta-da. All right. Obviously, obviously you have the flip uh, the flip screen that's polarizing. I right. mean, it's it's gonna be just like the X Pro 3, you know. At least people are talking about it, but this this camera was meant for hybrid shooters, hands down. I mean, coming from the dial that says still slash movie. Mm -hmm. I, I remember talking to one of the higher ups in Fujifilm and we're just sitting down and he's like, Chris, do you have any recommendations as far as stuff that we want to see in the future? And, you know, I was really asking for dual quick menus. Like I wanted a quick menu for movies and then I want a quick menu for stills because people have been having to do and, you know, seriously, I, you know, I got to set up, I don't want to have my high speed recording on one side and I want, and I want to have in my stills menu and I don't want to have stills related options in my video menu. I, I really don't. And you've got 16 options to choose from that's now been split to 32. I mean, there is so much customization on the camera. Glenn says, yeah, question mark as follows polarizing. It is right. <laughs> well, surprisingly enough, it, it sounds goofy, but if you go to, any of the Fujifilm rumor sites or any of the comment sites on like day one when this was announced, I mean, people were losing their minds. Like it ruined the camera. I'm never going to buy it again. You know, it's and for for what it is, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I think, as far I think as Glenn is, uh, I think he's joking that he thought he's joking that it's a polarizer. Uh, <laughs> my bad. It, <laughs> it is. It is a polarizer. That's how advanced the XT4 is. <laughs> The screen can actually create that effect for you. I'd actually, it, uh, it triples as a lens cap. It just depends on how you put the lens. There we go. It does a double as a lens cap. Yeah, there we well, go. Well, it works as a you screen just protector. Fold it right over the front here. <laughs> you just... That's uh, you know, I think both types of screens have equal amount of advantages and disadvantages. I prefer the regular. Um, just tilt up and down screen uh, just because I think it's faster and I think it's easier right. to use when you're just holding it at your waist. But uh, the nice thing that I would appreciate about a screen like that is that you could flip it over on itself and it just, you get a little more confidence that you're not going to scratch that screen up. Right. So, Surprisingly sure. enough, it just depends on shooting experience. I mean, this is going to sound ridiculous, but I, you know, I use some of our software. It's called X acquire. It's not going to be in this presentation where I can actually uh, save all my presets on here. Mm -hmm. I'll actually go between my stills mode in terms of what I'm shooting all my M glass. I don't even flip the screen around. I treat it like an X Pro 3. So it's nice not having that screen in my way. And people are like, oh, just turn it off. But it's completely different when all you see is basically what it looked like when you're shooting film, completely mm -hmm. black. It's simplistic. And when I go back to when I'm shooting all of our X series glass, I'll go to X acquire, I'll lo load my, all my new shortcuts and everything. Screen flips back out around, ready to go again. It makes it really easy. I think it was the right decision to put that type of screen on there. For, um, for who this is marketed towards, absolutely. I mean, right. we, especially with the X-T3, I mean, people were finally taking us seriously in terms of video. They didn't realize we have, you know, so many years of video production under our belts, maybe not under Fuji film, but under Fuji non. Right. I mean, I have we have lenses that one lens cost more than all of our cameras put together combined over the last ten years. I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty mind blowing. But we're taking all of our expertise in that and put it in on a serious camera, which does more for the price point. And I, I know I sound like a salesperson. I'm just excited about it. You sure. know, I, I'm excited to see all these features on something that costs less than two grand. I mean. You know, I came from Canon. I know a lot of people came from Canon that are shooting our stuff, shooting Sony stuff. And, you know, 5D Mark II, when I got into it, it was, what, 3500 bucks, 4000 bucks, And now we can go into a Sony that's $2,000. We can go into almost our flagship for, you know, 1700 bucks. I mean, us as photographers, in terms of what we get for our money, is completely changing. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see that, you know, a system like this where you're not dropping three grand and you're like, sweet. I got to use my kit lens from my Rebel, you know, in order to yeah. make this work. So, 
so here's so here's the new key features kind of so obviously i think the the number one thing people wanted was Im image stabilization in the body right ibis uh, was the biggest thing uh it is now it's uh, modified off of the xh1 uh, so we obviously had stabilization in that model uh, that was basically using springs uh, rather than magnets. So now it's 30% lighter, uh, and that's why you get those extra stops of stabilization over it. Uh, anywhere from half a stop to a stop and a half, depending on the lens. This checklist here, um, I just wanted to take a moment and give Fuji a little bit of props because uh, with both this X-T4 and the X-100V, I think they, they met every single improvement uh, requests that everybody asked of them for these these two new cameras, um, which I think is uh, great. I wish every company would meet those requests every time. So I was happy to see that. I thought that's why I thought the X100V was such a home run was because it, it just uh, almost everything. I mean, everything you know, that people wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you got that viewfinder. You know, that was somewhat. Uh, you know. It's slightly changed over, mm. you know, the X100. It's basically the same X100F, the same viewfinder as the X Pro 3. So yeah. you lose a little bit in magnification by an insignificant amount, but you gain so much in resolution. Uh, it's 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 great. Um, so new focal plane shutter, you know, it's a completely new shutter. Uh, 300,000 clicks over its predecessor, which I think was around 100,000, 150,000 clicks. Um, Will we it's, be able to to see how many clicks we have in the in the menu? I wish, uh, oh. like the X100. I think that's the, the only reason why is it's an integrated shutter. Okay. I, I really think that's the only reason. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm kind of. I was both happy and sad that it had that because I had the one from the store for a little while, and I was yeah. like, you, you didn't want to show show <laughs> Don't you know how much <laughs> I you shot put this. two thousand clicks on the <laughs> on the camera stores. It was. Uh, <laughs> I think it only reads in approximate uh, of, of uh like units of 100 um yeah. so like if you because i was doing it showed 100 and then i took one and i looked at it again and i was like it still says 100 and then it, i shot I a while longer and then suddenly it said 200 300 oh. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> it was an electronic shutter though so oh, that doesn't mean anything. it doesn't mean yeah. anything yeah. you're, so, all you're good turn on and off the sensor hmm. so uh, Boston Hooligan says best lenses for landscape, portrait, and walk around. You know, that's really subjective in terms of the field of view that you want. You know, I'm one of our F2 prime shooters. I love those. So for landscapes, for me, obviously, we have the 10 to 24. We have the 16. You know, we have the, oh, my gosh, I just had a brain fart, uh, 8 to 16. I'm thinking of the conversion as well as the lens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I personally use the 16 to 8. I personally use the 14. Uh, there's a print behind me on my wall. Uh, that's a, uh, this guy up here. That's taken from our 10 to 24. That's printed as a as a, a 40 by 60. So in terms of what resolution can does, this is on the XT2. So you know this is what you know four years ago. Mm -hmm. 10 to 24 is my go-to. You got filters uh, that you can add on to it. F4 is fine. You know, I'm not shooting at 2.8 for a landscape. Uh, so that was my primary lens. And now I just use the 16.28 and the 16.14 and the 14. And that's totally just for size. That's it. Uh, for portrait, I'm going to say the same thing. Uh, the 50 F2 is my go-to. And also I use it with our extension tubes. Uh, we have one that... Uh, it's the, we have an 11 and we have an, a 16. And if you put the 16 on there, it doubles as almost a macro. You get half-life size. So I've been using that for portraits for close-up. Uh, as far as walk-around, uh, the, the kit lens, the 16 to 80, uh, that's what I've been using. Uh, yes, I am a prime shooter, but I travel a lot too. And that 16 to 80 is fantastic. That 16 to 80 had uh, really, really good stabilization on it when I... Six I got, stops. Got a hold of one, and I was like, "Wow, that's really impressive." Kind of so, agree with you, though. Those F two primes are really fun. They're I, so tiny and, and like so. And if if you're thinking filter sizes, you know, you're not gonna. And this is what we were talking about when we had Tamron on too. I just yeah. love when companies give you a good quality lens with a tiny filter. <laughs> <laughs> I had. Uh, nice. I'm trying to look for my little adapter. I I don't have it up here, but I, I've been shooting some of my uh, M mount stuff on it too. Which, mm -hmm. And one of my lenses is like 39 millimeters. So I'm like, I got this 82 millimeter circular polarizer. I'm trying to find step down rings in order to fit on the 39. It just doesn't work. Right. 
Oh. Um, but yeah, and then um, what was I gonna say? Uh, you know, I love the fifty six one one two. Right. Oh. What do you guys feel about the one coming out later this year? There's a one point oh. Yep. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> the, the wider, the better in yeah. Mitch's world. Yeah. Well. <laughs> So uh, I bet you shoot it. a whole bunch of eight by ten, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's uh, I just haven't told anybody yet. That's <laughs> it. <idea. laughs> I uh, I've shot eight by ten once in my life, and uh, it did not turn out too well. Uh, I'm I'm very methodical in terms of my shooting, but I'm not that methodical. Um, so all right, we can go back to the slides. I know I'm going to talk a whole bunch. But he says, "Awesome, thanks, great content. Thanks oh, yeah. for thanks for watching, Boston Hooligan. Are you actually in Boston?" And you know, go, the bigger go question is, are you actually a hooligan? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's weather resistant, obviously. Same as um, the last generations. Yeah. Okay. It does it look? It looks a little thicker. Maybe it's just the photo. Did it get no, a little it, it thicker? Is, it is a little thicker, and the grip is slightly different. And uh -huh. uh, you know, I've done a few hands-on before. You know, you know, COVID nineteen really stopped the presses on all the stuff as far as going out. And uh, every single person that's picked it up is, uh, that has used one of our, not the actual battery grip, but those metal grips, uh -huh. they said they don't really need it anymore. So it is, it is one, of the, uh, one of the more co uh, comfortable cameras that I've used. The only reason why I've had the added grip on this is just because of the L bracket, just being a landscape shooter. That's it also shooter. looks nice. It, yeah, I uh, I got made fun of by uh, one of my coworkers. He's like, "Why are you trying to make the XT4 look like a Pentax 6.7? Uh, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's yeah. what I said. I'm like, "What's wrong with that?" <laughs> Fuji's uh, do look good with wood. Yeah, they that's, do. That's true. Let's that's see. true. Um, you have the let's see upgraded shutter release. Does it is it feel just a little it's more still, cushiony? It, it's a little bit more cushiony. I mean, there's still attention to it. Uh, it's not like the X-H1 by any means uh, where it could get tensioned if you send it in. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I find, to be honest, it, it feels almost the same, but it is more responsive. And that, that was one of the things that people were looking for. Yeah, I like it. It's like, and you've got the screw in still, right? So you could still add a soft shutter if you want. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I I, I had those on, uh, but every time I do an event, it tends to disappear. So I just yeah. on that. It's funny. I watch a guy on YouTube named Thomas Heaton. He's like, oh yeah, favorite. Thomas. Uh, uh, he's a great photographer. He's yeah. uh, one of the few that I follow. He's. I love his uh, philosophy on things. But he recently got a XT3, I think, to, to use as like his lightweight setup. And uh, it's funny to see his. He's got his cable release just kind of dangling there. Right. <laughs> Have you? It, uh, have you seen, uh, so the gentleman who recommended it, Thomas Heaton, is actually based out of California. It's uh, Ben Horn. Have you heard of him? Oh, yeah. I've, I think I follow him, too. I don't watch yeah. his videos as much, but. Uh, He's, uh, yeah, he works at a, a camera store as well. I can't remember, uh, but I. I watched his videos and uh, he's the one that really turned on Thomas uh, to the X-T3 as far as a hybrid shooter for size and, you know, yeah. size and weight when you're traveling and backpacking. Cause he also shoots like a large format uh, camera too. Uh, ben Horn. He's, yeah. uh, he's primarily, that's pretty much all he shoots for his yeah. videos. Uh, he has a, a setup for vlogging, which I think is uh, still Sony, which obviously there's nothing wrong with that, but. Uh, but I'm not offended. Far, no, I, I mean, He's like, yeah, Mitch, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's not my bad. You know, I came from Sony myself. I just like all the tactile controls. Uh, but, you know, it's nice to see that people are recommending gear outside of what they personally shoot that best fit a situation. And that's really why I respect these guys. And plus, they're way better than photography than I'll ever be. So at least I have someone around the RH to look up to, you know. Well, it helps your Instagram. Camera, so. Yeah, true. your Instagram is, is pretty great, Chris. I enjoy it. Oh, I, I appreciate it. I post uh, once a year. Um, so I did post <laughs> they uh, one quality year. over quantity. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, who, did, who were we talking to? Um, oh, we we're talking to Alex Burke. Alex Burke. He said 12 he's pictures a, a year is a large really format good. photographer. He takes, yeah. he says, as long as he gets good 12 keepers, um, you know, he's good to go. And I was just like, my jaw dropped to the floor. Cause I take like 3000 photos a night at baseball games. So it's like, <laughs> um, one of my, uh, sorry, Mitch, go ahead. 
Oh, no, I, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, well, I'm just going to assume that because I had nothing else to say. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I love, <laughs> no, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, people are like, man, Chris, you don't really take a lot of photos. I'm like, well, no, I don't I don't share a lot of photos. <laughs> you know, Because there's so many that I, I take day in, day out as far as for my job. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's people that do this for a living and they're meant to teach people about photography that they don't actually shoot, you know. My my goal as far as with our product is I shoot everything and I tell people they're like, oh, what do you think about this or that? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't shot it yet. So it's it's nice to have personal opinions about the actual gear and, you know, know that everything that I've done to it, I've personally done or everything I figured out I've personally done. So it's, you know, sure. coming from first hand experience. Yeah. Uh, so it's got so it's, this thing has two dual or a two that's what dual means everyone five dual, dual, means dual card two. slots five dual card slots it's got a, a dual uhs two slots that's um is that an upgrade over the xt t3 no, they it's both... a, so it's, it came from the xt2 uh uhs2 uh okay. which i'm going to recommend like uh just based off this guys i mean it, it obviously if you have uhs2 card slot from two generations ago and people are still using standard class tens, but in this camera, if you do, you know, J plug plus raw continue shooting them, you're going to be waiting if you don't have a UHS two card. Sure. I was shooting the Thunderbirds, um, on Saturday at Coors field and I put a normal UHS, uh, one class 10 card in my, yeah. in my a seven R four, which is a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and because i couldn't find my uhs2 card it disappeared like right before all this went down and so i was like screw it i'll just do this and of course it just hit right as they like cleared and i was just like duh, 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 duh. and it's oh. just like the worst waiting i think i've ever experienced in photography i've hit my buffer a couple times during like triples or inside the park home runs at at, at the rockies and that sucks but when the thunderbirds are going by and you hit your buffer and it's just the worst at um, least you had your camera with that's you. That's true. At least you had my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch. Um, um, my camera was 25 feet away from me. I'm uh, always going to be, that's going to hurt that me the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. I'll take you to a, an air show sometime soon, Mitch. We'll, we'll go, we'll go visit him at, at the air, at Nellis air force base or something. <laughs> um, so, so dual UHS two slots, nope. not new. Not new. Um, let me keep going here. Cause there's gotta be some, some cool, interesting stuff that I'm going to miss if we don't get, all the way through. Do you have any suggestions where I go? Here we go. Um, sorry, it's not the same font as as you probably sent it to me because my Mac doesn't have have Comic the, Sans. the Comic Sans. It was it in Cam Comic Sans. No, no, they, no, they would no, never do is, that. I was like, no, this is straight. You know, this is straight straight from Japan. I mean, you can basically look at uh, if you look at it. I'm trying to point to my screen. If you look at the corner of the slide layout, all those that's true. Right. It's all in. in so, in but. Uh, I mean, yeah, LCD screens, brand new. I mean, image stability system is brand new, as you can see. It's a new shutter completely, so you're you're getting what almost uh, uh, what, what what camera am I looking for? You know, one DX Mark II in terms of speed, in sure. terms of shooting with minimal blackout. Uh, video features, you know, wide tracking, uh, the bleach bypass. Uh, it actually is pretty fun. It's not my cup of tea. Uh, just because the the tones are fairly interesting as far as uh, you know the output that it has, uh, but it definitely does have its place. Uh, I'm just looking at it and going down the list here. Yeah. The new battery, you know, 600 shots, you're getting almost 1800 worth of grip. A lot of people were asking that. Uh, it almost uh, looks like uh, some of the old Panasonic uh, Sony batteries in terms of the size. And it, I will be honest, these are all SEPA ratings as far as uh, how uh, 600 shots, but I'm getting full days on one battery, which is nice because I remember, you know, I got a full bag of about 50, you know, standard W126 batteries over here just for all the cameras. And it's nice to know that I can take three batteries for this and I can shoot for a week technically just depending on my shooting style. It's pretty right. nice. I always like when someone says, how many photos does the battery last? And I was like, I don't know, how do you shoot? You know, I yeah, can get it. Exactly. I'm going to get 1,200 photos out of a battery at least. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. But, but that's because I'm sitting down and shooting all at the same time. And so, like, other people are going to backpack or go to, you know, the mountains for a day and a half. And they're yeah. going to leave their camera on and not take photos. And then they're going to turn it off and leave it back on and right. take a Yeah. So, I mean, it's always it's always different. I have all these portable battery chargers too. I mean, I've got uh, the anchor battery charger. I forget which one I have, but 
you know, just plugging it straight to the camera, all I need is one or two batteries to really get by. Sure. So, and, uh, you know, running off the battery supply just for that by itself, just because I can. I mean, the last slide, we just, you know, it does USB power. Worst case scenario, right. all I got to do is throw one of those batteries on my belt, plug it into the freaking camera, and I can shoot for, you know, a day and a half continuously if I really wanted to, if it was a problem. Exactly. And then, um, you know, face and eye autofocus, it's kind of uh, comes come standard now, huh? Uh, it, so it's been standard since the X-T2. Uh, sure. How well it worked uh, was really dependent on the processor. And uh -huh. I think the X-T3 did a decent job. But I really think this is our camera. And, you know, I try to be honest about our products. I don't know if this is going to actually play. Uh, but I'd say it's one and a half, if not two times better than the X-T3. Cool. And I know that's not really quantifiable as far as what it can do. Uh -huh. uh, but I know a lot of people since they're, I mean, there's so many new things with cameras and then people are trying to one up each other. I mean, Sony's really f driving, uh, you know, face finding and eye find, you know, eye detection because that's their bag right now. I mean, they're one of the best at it and everyone's like, I got to have it in our camera. And, uh, you know, yes, it does make life easier. And if it is a commodity, I will say that it's very usable on almost every single one of our lenses now. Sweet. And in the, is the new Q menu, uh, is it make it so I can, I can move it without having to click it first. As far as using the rotor back rotary dial. Yeah. I'm always, yeah. that's always, Oh, that's nice. Cause I always, I'm always lost when I get to the back menu just because, um, I'm coming from my Canon or my Sony and right. then I pick up my girlfriend's camera and I go to change it and I always exit out, you know, of the uh... Q menu when I get there. You know what I mean? So, so what are you trying to do? Are you trying to hit the Q menu and change the option under it? Right, but then when I do it, it doesn't. Um, or I want to. You know what I do? I want to. I want to click it. I click it with the to confirm the can confirm, and then it takes me out. Yep. Yeah. So basically, all you do with that is I just tell people hit the shutter halfway down. There you don't go. really need to confirm anyway. Once you select something, you're already right. there. Okay. Sweet. So that that has not changed. Or if you really if you really want to do that, obviously you can use the touch screen on the quick menu. Right. That's and now it's going to be able to tell you how old your battery is or like how. Well, uh, so we still technically had that. Uh, it uh -huh. just is more accurate this time. Sure. So uh, the sensor, as far as what James has asked, uh, it is still the same sensor. It is still the same processor as the X-T3. Completely different algorithms. I mean, that has completely changed as far as it, it being tweaked. So image quality is going to be exactly like the X-T3. That's not going to change. But sure. as far as usability and responsiveness, if I put an X-T3 and an X-T4 side by side, you, you will notice the speed difference, hands down. Not sure. only for operation of camera, but for bracketing, things along those lines. Uh, can you go back up uh, to the last slide we are, we're at just one more time? Oh, this one? Uh, yeah. So there's some interesting things on here. Uh, so uh the in-camera uh tiff converter so you can convert from your raw file to a tiff just know that going from a 14-bit file you're not going to get true 16-bit i had a few people ask about that the only camera in our lineup that does or in, i'd say 90 percent of the lineups out there is going to be our gfx 100 that's the only thing that has true 16-bit uh, the new noise reduction, uh, you know, I haven't used it enough, so I don't want to say positive or negative about it. All I can say is they really have tweaked the algorithm that supposedly handles it a little bit better. Sure. Um, and the quick menu, the Q menu settings, uh, what they what they want me to talk about is now that you have two quick menus. So, oh, cool. Sweet. So, uh, like I, I said, had a... go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you're, you're saying you had a... Um, I had a question from yeah, Twitter sure. when I posted about this, um, that we were doing this, uh, one of someone that follows me, they wanted to know if you guys were making uh, a new version of Acros. <laughs> Along with the film? Yeah. No, no it's going to be the same Acros as before. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, <laughs> what a crazy question. Um, if they're, if you, you wouldn't know if you're contracting it out to another manufacturer. Um as far as what the camera? No, uh, the um, they're talking about the actual film. Oh, the actual film itself. That's yeah. still going to be by us. I mean, okay, it, yeah. So because you got to factor in, there's Fujifilm North America, there's Fujifilm UK, Japan. I mean, they're doing production in in very specific places. Sure. And there are camera manufacturers that do contract out work, but mm -hmm. you know, we we still make film. 
Okay. So I, we have no reason to, to, to contract that. out. And then yeah. is it going to, is it going to come back in five, uh, four by five? I, that I don't know. I wish yeah. I could, I could answer that question. Um, there we go. You know, a lot of people are still asking for eight by 10 stuff. They're asking for, you know, what is it? The FP 100 C people still want that. And those oh. are the things I, I just don't know about because there's yeah. this totem pole right here yeah. and wait, you can still see my hand. There we go. I'm, <laughs> I'm done down there. for sure. We had a couple boxes of the FP 100 C in, in the shop. Um, they really? were, it, it was, exp I don't know. It was expired. It had been in someone's uh, fridge the entire time or the freezer. Um, and, uh, and it was going for $85 a box oh, yeah. or something. It was, it was, I mean, and we should, we should, we could have sold it for more. That stuff oh, is just flying off the it's shelf. It's basically like gold, uh, before, uh, it's almost worth as much as toilet paper right now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we uh, had, uh, down at spring training, the Denver post photographer was shooting some and then, really? and I said, Hey, did you tell them that you bought this? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> not yet. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's it's going to go on the expense report for sure. When uh, Acros got discontinued in, uh, at least over here, I was buying up 120, okay. like nonstop. I still have about 20 rolls on my fridge, but I, I see some people trying to sell it for 15, 20 bucks a roll. Mm -hmm. and I you think know we've the, got some in the fridge. Really? The, the original the still 120 yeah. or 35 is pretty hard to find too now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see we James have. has another question. I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but oh, uh, yeah. So uh, in terms of the four uh, should be re, uh, released uh, early May in terms of body only. Okay. So hopefully the first or second week of May, uh, as far as the kit goes, I think that's going to be pushed back to maybe the first or second week of June. Sure. That's as far as I know in terms of a release date. I just know that with, you guys know how popular the X-T3 was. Yeah. Uh, as far as that, think of the X-T4 double that in, in terms of popularity. I mean, in terms of pre-orders, in terms of what people are expecting with this. So that's why we put most of our eggs into the body-only basket because that's mm -hmm. that's what people are asking for. Right. A lot of people already have lenses and whatnot. Right. Oh, the, exactly. oh, the X-T40. Um, he was in. Oh, X-T40? I, yeah. There is, there is no X-T40. Yeah, I, there is. And the XT30 is, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, a year old, if, if that? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and trying to put an IBIS system into something that small, I mean, it just, it's not going to make sense. Uh, sure. But to answer, to answer your question, James, I I have no idea. I mean, in terms of our timelines, uh, people are guessing. They usually say two years, year and a half. But with the popularity of the XT30 still holding its own, because I take that every time I travel, you know, if I don't have room in my backpack for the T3 or the T4, I'm going to take that. It still has its place. So I, I think it still has a, a, at least another year under its belt. I think you'll see the XE3 replaced before you see the XE3. I forgot about the XE. I love that. The XE3, the more I played with it, um, was, was an awesome camera. Uh, or it's is an awesome time. camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's still around. <laughs> it was an awesome camera. Yes. <laughs> um, but I'd love that um, to go back to film real quick. I have, yeah. I have a couple rolls left. Do you, do you ever know Aaron? You knew Aaron, right? Uh, Aaron yeah, Brinkley. Yeah, yeah. She um, uh, she was working at the shop when I was trading stuff in to move to Fuji. Okay, sweet. Yeah, she sold me um, a bunch of like ten rolls of old Neopan sixteen hundred. Really? And it's my favorite black and white film That's of all awesome. time. Every role I shoot, I'm just like, man, this film makes me look so good. <laughs> I'm just like, um, I shot some fashion shows with it and stuff really? like that. Oh, it's such a killer. It's I like only have favorite. one role of that, so I need uh, I need a very special occasion. Exactly, right? I'm just like holding it. Holding I, have a, with it. I have a Fuji Chrome uh, 64 still in my fridge, so I'm waiting for a special occasion for that too. So that one's pretty hard to find. I actually... Uh, so not to cut into our time, but I have a great story about sure. your guys' store. So last time I was out there, uh, well, maybe one or two times ago, I came in there. You guys had a Voigtlander Bessa sitting in your Leica case. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, man, I really want to buy this. You know, when am I going to shoot film again? I have all these other film cameras. So I decided not to, right? And so I ended up leaving your store with a Leica M9. And uh -huh. so I, instead of spending a thousand bucks, I ended up spending three thousand dollars. <laughs> and so, but then uh, there's a gal that worked at another camera store 
that came down to the event that I was working at. She mm -hmm. was like, oh, check out my new camera. It was the freaking Bessa. Oh, you know, her I, store. Yeah, she works at Mike's camera, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I, forgot, I can't remember. Um, I'm so bad with names. No, I know faces. what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but she comes in and looks at our Leica case all the time. So, mm -hmm. so I did a trade with her. So I traded her my XT2 and a couple lenses, and I got uh -huh. that Bessa. Oh, really? Yeah, a year later. A year so, later. So I traded I traded my XT2 with a 16 to 55. I think uh, my 16.14 and 10 to, uh, my uh, my 10 to 24, and I got that. I got my uh, her GA645 ZI, and she gave me like 40 rolls of film. That Fuji Chrome came a part of that. So it was like a whole thing. That camera was meant to be. Like I was meant to have that Bessa. It just was very circular. So I was pretty happy about that. Awesome. We had some really clean Bessas come through the shop and they don't stay very long. No, no. Bessas they, are, are sleepers. They are, they are. They're going for more money now. I mean, just like anything, like I had a, the Minolta 40 mil F2. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I bought that maybe uh, two years ago for like 300 bucks and now they're like $600. It's mind blowing. Yeah, a lot of you know the the research I do. I I usually don't know a lot about rangefinders, especially old film rangefinders yeah. that come through and stuff. But I just research them so I can act like I know what I'm talking about <laughs> on, on Instagram. You know, yeah. so we like to put the cool film cameras that come through on our Instagram. And in the research I did, like some of these best R's or uh, had brighter viewfinders, better viewfinders than the Leicas. You know, and 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 just there's any rangefinder. Any street photographer that's like comes through and asks about rangefinders, they always ask first question is, "Do you have any Bessas?" So, have you guys uh, ever shot any of our uh, Class A cameras? It starts with a K. It's uh -uh. Uh, so we had a street camera that was produced uh, up until I, I can't remember. So I think two thousand nine, somewhere around there. I could be completely wrong, so don't quote me on this, guys, and hold it over my head. <laughs> uh, but. Um, it's actually almost like a Ricoh GR. Okay. Mm. But it's with our optics on there. It's a, it's pretty beautiful. Hold on, give me one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can grab mine real quick. It's only in this glass case behind me. Oh, cool, sweet. Mitch, gra grab the snow speeder too. Grab. <laughs> <laughs> You were so close to the snow Chris, speeder. Chris, yeah, you grabbed the wrong thing. We were yeah. wanting oh, to no, see I'm the snow sorry. speeder. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's basically that. Let me uh, let me make it big. Oh, that's cool. I think maybe we've had one of those come through the shop. So I was surprised. Like I, I I saw one of these at one of my dealers here in the U.S., which you can barely even find these in the U.S. Usually they come from Japan now. And I'm like, oh, that's really nice. I'm like, uh like thinking it might be a hundred or 200 bucks. I was just going to buy it. They're like, Oh yeah, that's uh, $700. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And uh, they're like the black rendition of this guy, a mm -hmm. thousand bucks. Jeez, man. But it's, Jeez. it's a beautiful camera, but back to the XP T4 before I get fired. Right. You could <laughs> yeah, go out and find this camera. You can't find anywhere. Right. Exactly. Um. <laughs> I, I'm so, sorry. I just, I just been working with you guys so long. Uh, you know, I, I love just telling stories about stuff that I get from your shop and things like well, that. Well, that's just the Englewood camera way, man. We talk right. about everything. We talk about so it here's the here's the new film simulation for Eterna. You're definitely still looking at me, unfortunately. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot that I don't have – there we go. Boom. I slip so, up every once in a while. Go to, the, go to the next one. Okay. Hold on. Down One down below. So you can kind of see the difference. So this is the bleach bypass. This is the new version, and okay. the the other uh, the the other slide was the standard Eterna. Generally, what you'd use if say you're shooting video, mm -hmm. or what I tell people, uh, I use the Eterna for any raw shooting because sure. uh, you're not getting a true histogram whatsoever on any camera manufacturer until you use a flat profile. But I, I've tried it. Skin tones uh, interesting. Uh, they definitely have it has its place, but I don't know if I have a, 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 a new uh, color neg slide in here, uh, to be honest. But that's I, I wish I wish we did. But that's been my choice as far as what I've been shooting probably 100 percent of the time right. on the X100 as well as the X-T4. That's what that's what we were shooting in the store. Yeah. It's and uh, beautiful. Got a little red tint to it. Uh, so I go into white balance and maybe add maybe like plus two plus four red. 
Mm -hmm. shooting in the shade oh my gosh beautiful like i some of the skin tones i get out of that are just amazing it, it, it's it, and you know this comes from someone who i've shot a lot of film in my day and you know i've gone through a lot of camera manufacturers and i rarely can find something that i like straight out of camera without having to tweak it sure but th this this is you know for bright sunlight situations, it can be somewhat muted. You might have to play with your white balance shift just a little bit, but when you're in shade, beautiful. Love it. Sweet. I think we kind of went through through the whole thing. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. New independent still movie menu. That's cool. So basically, uh, so obviously on the screen you can see the movie mode slash still mode where the where the photometry dial used to be. You know, I try to tell people I rarely meter on mirrorless cameras at all. The only time I would is if I was in a studio or something like that and I'm turning off wide view. Uh, but so if you go into movie mode now, movie mode has been switched to the top platform. So you don't have to go and hunt through everything, through all the stills features in order to get to the sole movie features now. So Sweet. you go to the still option, vice versa, all your stills oriented options are going to be under that. Right on. And I wish this would let me change. I have to go back here every time, but that's okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> See, yes, in by stabilization. So uh, I over that, but not a lot. So we uh, we have uh, the digital stabilizer as well that only works in uh, in movie mode. So you do lose ten percent crop, like it says on here, but. It's it's pretty interesting. I it almost eliminates potential uh, for a gimbal, uh, just because you're basically like you know how some of the older cameras it was all sensor based stabilization. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same premise. You lose that ten percent, so your image floats a little bit. It gives you that leeway. I can't give you a range in terms of how many stops of stabilization, but. I'm, I'm, I can literally, I, I have a gimbal uh, and I, you know, I can run down uh, the street and it looks like I'm standing, you know, basically floating in midair. It's almost the same premise with this. As long as your technique's spot on, it's, it's pretty impressive. And we also have a boost mode, you know, that's going to treat the camera like as if you're on a tripod when you're hand holding. It's kind of going to try to illuminate any sort of camera shake whatsoever. Sure. If you try to pan, that's going to uh -huh. look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> right on so that's kind of the uh the xt4 very cool i love it um if you like i we did this lot i would do this yesterday when we were talking about the uh, the other camera we were talking about i'm not going to bring it up right now. um but uh <laughs> but you can you can uh this one so is, does it have an r in it? it it does have an r in it uh nice. is, is it um this is a, available for for pre-order right you can oh, someone yeah. could someone could message the shop well, here, um here's the difference between so. those those two cameras is one is just still kind of a fantasy yeah, and one of them saying. actually exists yeah. right. <laughs> so. well i mean if you're a videographer i can see where it takes place but you got to factor in i mean like there's always going to be something better i mean right. i could you know for for video i'm glad they did it you know yeah. people have been asking for a camera like mm -hmm. that for a while but for stills, I mean, I, I mean, GFX 100, you know what I mean? Right. That camera. Yeah. <laughs> that camera is going to cost so much more than the camera right here on the screen. Um, does the GFX so 100, does that have a uh, classic neg on it? No, it doesn't. Damn. Yeah. Damn. And, every, it and everyone says, uh, I have, I have no idea. You know, I hope so. Uh, I really do. But you know, a lot of people are shooting just, you know, going from 16 bit raw to TIFF and they're just going to edit anyway. But I'd like to see that as a film simulation for when I shoot video. Yeah. Because obviously that does 4K 10 bit too, you know, mm -hmm. as well. And stabilized. And wild. stabilized. <laughs> and has a uh, hundred megapixels. And <laughs> and uh, you guys saw the firmware update about the uh, pixel shift, right? On that camera. Tell us. I about thought it. it had that when it uh... No, it does so four hundred megabyte files potentially. You thought your A7R4 was tough, Kyle. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and now you got to deal with a 400 megabit. File. Yeah, that's, that would just that's, ruin. A, that's a lot. That's a lot. What size print computer. do you think you could make with that? Well, I mean, so the, the, the file straight out of the GFX 100, or the 100 megapixels, is 30 by 40 at 300 DPI. So I can only imagine that you could get probably 
40 by 60. I'm, I'm guessing. I, I really have no idea. And that's obviously could go higher, but it all depends on what you're printing at. 300 mm. DPI versus 200. Straight out of the camera, you're probably what? 400 inches by what? A thousand? I, I'm just picking something. <laughs> yeah. out of my butt. Yeah. <laughs> Your dogs are angry at you because you forgot to finish trimming one's hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my partner is getting back uh, from her walk. But uh, yeah, they can make a pre-order. Uh, obviously, hope through, hopefully through you guys. I mean, right. you got the same price as anything. Mm -hmm. And like what I've been doing, you know, I've been working with you guys for six years. Yeah. In terms of what I've been buying and selling, I've sold all my Canon stuff through you guys, all my Sony stuff through you guys. And this is even outside of me living in Colorado. And, you know, that right. really just talks about your store in general and what you guys have to offer. So you guys keep me coming back and hopefully they'll have a reason for other people to support your store as well. For sure. We appreciate it, Chris. Heck yeah. Sweet. So if you want to pre-order the X-T4 uh, uh, body kit, um, whatever fits uh, your budget or whatever you, whatever you need, just message us uh, on Facebook or or at email staff at inglewoodcamera.com and we can, uh, we'll get back to you. And hopefully when everything gets uh, at least kind of feeling back to normal. <laughs> Back to normal. It'll be ever normal. Oh, whenever you that. can uh, pull the door and it'll open for you at Inglewood Camera, <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, you'll be able to, to come check it out in the shop. So, and you can uh, talk to me about the X100. There yeah, there we go. He's the new <laughs> aficionado. Um, sweet, Chris. We appreciate you coming on. Heck yeah, I appreciate you inviting me, and it's always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, hopefully, I'll be able to do it again. Yeah, hopefully it's in person. You can come I, hang out, right? Yeah. I hope hang so. out with all of us and, and Larry and have a couple of beers in the back. So just don't tell anybody, right? Yeah, we don't tell anyone. It's always <laughs> it's always after hours. You're never right. talking to customers at that point. Um, but sweet, this has been uh, Camera Shop Talk uh, for April 21st. Doesn't matter what day it is. Uh, Tuesday, all though. one big day. It's all one big day. day. All one long, long <laughs> day. Long. We're going to be back tomorrow, me and Mitch, Mitch and I, and uh, and it'll, it'll be fun. We'll talk about the newest camera stuff. So tune in tomorrow. Tell your friends. Tell your mom. She's probably bored. She wants to watch us on, on the screen. I'm going to get out of here. I'm ending the broadcast.